a uh, shed update and uh, the heater works perfectly uh, I noticed uh, some people do mention the uh, extreme uh, fire hazard with all the uh, plug-ins but it's actually pretty safe you know half this is uh, uh, pretty much the fans which you know I'll probably take them off for the uh, winter months and they're not running right now so I'll you know unplug those and all that and I don't leave the uh, heater running so I always unplug it uh, before I uh, leave out here anyway and plus I use this for inside the house for the uh, water heater during the ultimate uh, winter months when it gets really uh, below zero but anyway that's uh, you know two for one I get the uh, use of the heater inside the art but a shed update uh, adding another build and play uh, resistance x-wing from the force awakens and I got this at the local goodwill they uh, had it just on a top of shelf it was a uh, really cheap the way the price was and uh, it's never been open and I can always tell when it's a gift because you always see a uh, tape on the back for the uh, wrapping paper and sometimes you can find the remnants of uh, birthday paper Christmas paper you name it you know because people do give models as gifts however I would be ecstatic getting a model for uh, birthday Christmas because I always do like to get them but anyway I add me a resistance x-wing and if you look here uh, I only got the one so now I have two and you know that's the way we like to uh, roll around here so uh, adding a build and play x-wing to uh, the art uh, we'll get to the instructions there in just a moment uh, Battle of Hoth action scene. This is actually a reissue of the MPC uh, kit that if you look up here, uh, the Empire Strikes Back uh, Rebel Base, uh, and they did the action scenes back then. Um, I actually don't know if I have one of these. If I do, I think it's in one of those uh, uh, Rebel Bases. I think I got the actual base that comes with it because this is one of the first kind of kits that intrigued me back in the 80s, uh, vacuum form. And it was one of those, you know, ooh, you know. It's just a, uh, you can do so much with it, and I love the uh, battle scenes. I mean, you can always, uh, you know, redo it and have a completely other, uh, you know, another different type of scene. And hell, you can even uh, technically paint it uh, uh, sand and make a sand one. You know, no one would know. I mean, unless you actually put the field generators, and you know, they didn't necessarily didn't have to have these turrets in the snow. And according to, you know, if you listen real closely, those are not called snow speeders. They were called just speeders. So, you know, there's that. That's my uh, nerd car. However, uh, the action scenes, you know, you got over here, you got the uh, uh, the rebel base, and, uh, and that's by NPC. There's one kit I'd like to have, and this has nothing to do with Star Wars, and that's the Raiders of the Lost Ark by MPC they did a uh, vacuum form uh, base kit and I would like to have one I just I saw it many years ago and I was kind of like, well this is kind of crazy I don't really want it it's kind of real small you know small stuff I like you know big big vehicles but uh, I would like to have one to add to the art but anyway uh, I'm going to add the Hoth uh, vacuum form uh, base kit to the art uh, the Titanic uh, this is one of their one 1200 scale, which is a real tiny, tiny, small ship. Uh, small ships. Can't say that really fast. Uh, this is one of those. Uh, well, I got I got a lot of Titanic models, and uh, uh, certain and uh, certain Titanic models that I bought were for. Uh, uh, I either got really, really cheap, or uh, I was buying it to make like this one. Uh, I wanted to cut it in half and do the uh, damage version of it and uh, these right here were from a basically a dollar store uh, it was a dollar or two dollar store I can't remember exactly and I've never seen them in this type of box before so of course I had to get a couple of those and I probably got some uh, uh, loose Titanic stuff somewhere but anyway uh, I necessarily wouldn't want to build the Titanic I want to build the, uh, the the sister ship and I the name eludes me right at the moment but anyway uh, 
do not have this one. I don't know if I have it in a smaller scale or not. Uh, if I did, I probably buried it back there. But anyway, uh, notice it's in the uh, uh, packaging that you can hang, you know, like with a uh, nail here, like so. When you hang it up, so I'm probably going to have to try to find me a way to uh, see if I can do the. See, it's too long, can't hang it from the top, but I'll do something where I'll uh, I'll try to hang it, uh, you know, somewhere. Who knows? We'll we'll figure it out. But anyway, that's uh, that's pretty darn slick, and it's a small kit too, which I do like. And uh, I not necessarily wouldn't make the Titanic. I'd make uh, you know whatever uh, sister ship or my personal favorite. And I don't know if I have all you to do. Doctor Who down there, I would make the Starship Titanic. That's the one I would personally would do. That's just something that uh, just screams uh, to be made. But anyway, adding the little Titanic uh, to the art. Uh, the M48, this is an Academy kit. It's a uh, 35th scale. It's uh, It has been started, which that's no... Uh, well, if I don't, I'm trying not to spill it here. Uh, it has been started. That's no big deal. Uh, I'll, and I'll say this: uh, I have yet to uh, really find a kit that's even even started or built up that cannot be used. I mean, it's all this stuff in here is usable. Even if you weren't a didn't even collect models and you're just a, strictly a builder, there's not a kit in here that is not usable for something. Even if you just bought, you know, say you needed this for just the uh, a basic shape to make like say an M49 you know uh, or an M48 uh, you know A8 or something of that nature you know at least you got the, uh, the generic chassis and the uh, uh, you know turret and all that and then you can add the uh, scratch builder aftermarket parts on all you want but anyway I have yet to find a model that's not usable but uh, one little thing though uh, Academy does it too and uh, uh, to my, uh, the M48, if you uh, get their model and put it together, it's actually, uh, the road wheels, they need to be uh, compressed down just a little bit. Because the one at Aberdeen that they took the uh, measurements out of, the suspension is uh, raised up. So they, uh, the model kit's wrong if you really want to get down to it. But, you know, we... Uh, we don't like to nitpick in the model world, but that's just one of them little things, which if you, you know, want to correct it, you can. If not, it looks good the way it is. And that's uh, one thing, and I'm pretty sure I don't have an Academy one, so uh, that's a uh, that's a unique uh, one to have here. Uh, Space 1999, the, uh, the alien, I can't remember what they called the, uh, uh, the little doom buggy. I think they called it a doom buggy. Uh, but anyway, and we'll get to the uh, instructions. Uh, this is the Fun Dimensions uh, kit. The uh, where is it? Uh, round two. They uh, they reissued this kit. And it's one of those. Uh, I, I, if I could get a got it, I probably would have. But uh, getting a uh, an original Fun Dimension kit that was a uh, you know cream of the crop right there. Plus you get the little. Uh, Get the little alien man, but the one thing I want to know is because I haven't bought a uh, the reissue of this kit is because I want to know if the vacuum form uh, base uh, comes with the reissue kit. That's uh, one of the curiosities that I because uh, I really didn't know that this kit came with the vacuum form base, so I want to know if the reissue kit has one uh, with it as well. However, you get the little uh, get the little alien uh, guy that goes with it, so that's just even cooler. Plus, it's a fun dimensions kit, which uh, I don't have a whole lot of them. I mean, I have the uh, I have the uh, eagles uh, that are from Fun Dimensions. Uh, Six million dollar man got uh, him and uh, probably a few other uh, kits that I can't think of the top of my head. But anyway, gorgeous shape box. I mean, uh, thing it's just like a little time capsule just uh, came off the shelf at the hobby store and uh, magically appeared here in uh, the art. This came out in what 70, 75, 76 somewhere around here. Actually, just top knot. Look at that. But anyway, adding the uh, alien little moon buggy uh, to the art. Uh, 
the Orion. Uh, this is the air, old Airfix one. The Mobius one is, uh, you know, uh, fairly accurate. This one is kind of not accurate, but I like it because it's good size. Uh, you hardly ever see it, you know, and it's just so much you can uh, do. You can even paint it this scheme here. But anyway, uh, I only have uh, one of the Airfix kit, and uh, uh, now. You know, we like to roll around here. We got two of them, and uh, I always like to do, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, cuss it because it's not, you know, entirely accurate. You know, there's some uh, panel lines missing or somewhere. But anyway, the uh, I like uh, kits like this because you can have variants. You know, you can get a uh, dead nut accurate kit, you know, from another company, but someone else that came up one in the, you know, 70s. Uh, you can always paint that up and have some form of variant of the vessel. That's just the way I look at it. It's a, I think it's just a really fun kit. Very simple kit. Uh, just, uh, I think it's just top notch. But anyway, adding another uh, Airfix Orion to uh, the art. Uh, this one's kind of a little bit of a gem. This is an Airfix SS France, and I don't have a whole lot of ship models. I mean, I really don't. Uh, if I do have ship models, uh, I have I bought them for either uh, uh, yeah, cheap or uh, you know his historical. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the Enterprise there. You know, that's. Uh, you know, to go with the, uh, you know, Star Trek and all that. And, uh, you know, some of the sailing ships, which I was on a uh, sailing ship kit because I, uh, I watched a uh, Transformers show in Japan that had uh, sailing ships that were in space. So I was just intrigued and I had to have it. But anyway, most of the ships that we have, they're either uh, uh, vintage, you know, uh, vintage kits like the uh, Lifelike, the uh, Olbervell. You know, I do like uh, submarines, which they're down... Uh, down here behind the wall of figures and uh, but you know most of uh, some uh, ships do tell stories like the typhoon there you know Red October great movie but they also use that in a uh, Star Trek which uh, they used the conning tower to make a uh, wolf 359 ship but anyway you have some of those uh, but um, a lot of my ship kits that uh, that I usually got them for were for Star Blazers. If you uh, you could kit bash uh, these old uh, snap type uh, monogram kits, I mean these were just almost in scale with uh, the Star Blazer kits over there. But anyway, that's the science fiction part of it. You know, that's just uh, what we uh, like to do over here. But anyway, this is uh, I like uh, I like odd ships. I think uh, this fits fits the uh, bill right here. You know, and it's a passenger liner. It ain't uh, it ain't a ship of war. You know, which uh, I you know that's mostly what you can get. But you know, I get to the point where uh, my uh, tastes have changed. Where I like you know uh, yachts and uh, passenger liners. Which you know, this it, I'd have to do some research. But you know, did they use this for like a, a medical ship or you know some of that nature? This is a different class. You know that they use for you know something. Was this at the you know uh, did it, you know, carry uh, supplies to, uh, you know, somewhere in the war? Just a different, different adventure than a normal uh, warship or something like that. But anyway, gorgeous kit. I mean, you just don't uh, don't see stuff like that all the time. And you do see stuff like that at some hobby stores, but you know that's just uh, pretty slick. But anyway, I one thing that threw me off here. It's an Airfix kit that it's got. Uh, Pardon me, either uh, Japanese uh, writing on it too. That's just uh, that's something I don't know, or Chinese, or uh, it does Japan, made in '80, made in Japan. That's crazy. So I gotta figure out, uh, Mr. Gunsey there. I guess he did. Oh, to stop, do some research on that. See about Mr. Gunsey if he did uh, kit instead of the. Uh, uh, finishing touches, what I like to call the paint line of uh, Mr. Gunsey there. But anyway, uh, that's a quick little uh, what we're adding to the arc. I thought that was just a uh, fantastic uh, uh, kit to add into the uh, arc itself. But anyway, that's what I've got going on today. We are adding the SS France. We're adding another Airfix Orion. 
and some more build and plays a vintage fun dimension alien uh, space buggy a patent and the uh, Hoth vacuum form kit. But anyway, that's what I got going on today. So stay tuned for the next exciting episode.